Hello and welcome back to Spirit of Nature Art and part five of the Botanicals Journal where we focus on the back cover and just get started on the spine. So here's my idea. I thought that I would have a background page from one of my Botanicals um, vintage books and create some kind of little pocket on the back here. I thought I'd go with the, a bit of a coin pocket style thing, that was something we can tuck things into. So. I'm just creating the basis for that little pocket here. So you can see all I've done is taken a, another bit of that off cut from the file folder and I've created two scores along the longer sides. That's gonna create the top and bottom flap. And now I'm just scoring again to create the side flaps. And all I've done is I've, I haven't, I'm not giving any measurements because this is all I've done. I've placed the piece of card on the back there and just kind of seeing where the size needs to be. I'm gonna cut out those little corners pieces there. So where the score lines meet, I'm cutting those pieces away. And as you can see, I'm just cutting a slight little angle on it just to kind of make it easier when we fold everything together. So it's a real basic thing, just take a rectangle, that top and bottom score is probably maybe one and a half centimetres or so. And then those two scores at the side, you'll see how those two pieces come together. They just overlap slightly. To create what's gonna be a little pocket that will just sit on that back cover there. There we go, so it's gonna to fold together like that. Don't know which way around I'm gonna put it yet. Maybe that way around. <laughs> so I'm just going to round the corners of the top and bottom or side to side, depending on which way around I do it. But these are going to be the flaps that are going to be visible. So I'm rounding these corners. And now I just want to create the closure. So I'm just cutting out with my hole punch a couple of little circles and we're gonna create a little tie closure. So it just looks like a bit of old vintage kind of um, coin envelope. And because we want it to look old and vintage and match with everything else, yep, yeah, that's right, the distress inks have come out. So as usual, I've started with tea dye and then vintage photo for this project. Um, and I'm going back in with that tea dye just to blend that vintage photo a little bit. And you'll notice I'm not doing that middle section because that back, that's the outside back piece, which is gonna be stuck to the back page. So I'm just adding a bit of water and dabbing that off to create that lovely oxidized look that you get with the Distress Oxides and inks. And I'm just splashing on a little bit of that salvaged patina oxide as well, just to match with other areas on the project. And just to make the edges and the folds really stand out, I'm just going around with a rather light touch of ground espresso. So you can see how it's starting to come together here already. And now I want to create these little closures. So these little circles that I've cut out, which have also had the oxide treatment, I've just eyeballed the center and I'm just punching a hole in there using my cropper dials so that I can attach those to those little flaps. So I'm just making a little mark on those flaps as well through the holes that I've created in those circles. And I'm gonna go and punch a matching hole in the flap as well so that I can attach those little circles. I don't know what that closure is called. Some of you guys may do, I'm not sure. Um, but you'll, um, it's really easy to make them nice and decorative. Looks really effective and vintage. And I just need a couple of brads to be able to finish this look off. So there's my little circle, matching it up with the hole I've punched in the flap. a bit of extra distress on because I think I've taken some off with my fingers it probably wasn't dry when I tried to use it uh, and then adding the brad through squishing those little legs out so that that little circle stays in place and don't worry you're not going to see those legs by the time we finished those will get covered up and just pushing those down so they're really flat because I am gonna be covering this up, so I wanted them nice and flat. So that's how it is going to look. And now I want to get this decorated. So I've got some more of those lovely vintage book pages and I'm just kind of choosing the bits that I want to be on the inside of those flaps and holding it up 
and then drawing around it, cutting it out. So I don't do any measuring because I just want certain parts of the page. I want certain images to show on the flaps. These are the inside flaps that are gonna show when you open this little envelope out. So we can see, there we go, this lovely kind of illustration there is what is going to be seen. So I'm just putting the page on the flap where I want it to and drawing around, making those little measurements as I go along. And that will go on the flap like that. So I'm gonna do all four flaps. As you can see there, I've done that. I'm just sticking that on with a little bit of a glue stick. I've gone for two illustrations on the wider portions and then just text on the small little flaps. So when you open it, you're gonna see these lovely images. And I also want to put something in that middle section so when you open it, you get something nice as well. So I've just found uh, this lovely uh, page from one of my vintage illustrated books and I'm just drawing around the size of that back panel so that I can cut out the piece that I want so that it fits in like that. So now I want to age all of this lot up so I'm bringing in the oxide starting off with the tea dye as usual and just adding a little bit straight with my blending tool onto those pages just to already soften it and also some of these pages are from different books so it kind of brings them all together vintage photo around the edge a little bit of smooshing with the tea dye there so just smooshing it onto a bit of acetate spray a little bit of water move it around a little bit and then i'm just going to dab that on just to create that lovely aged look That central piece will also get that same treatment so that it, oopsie, so that it all fits together. My husband will tell you, whoopsie is the most used word in my art room. <laughs> so here we go, it's starting to come together now. The inside is looking good. And I've just got a bit of tea dye paper here. I just want to tuck like a little kind of piece of tea dye paper in there as a little journal, a little place to put some notes so that when you open it, You've got a little note, a little kind of secret note space to use. So now I want to kind of start to blend this in with the rest of the project. So out come the field notes stamp set. And I'm using the same colours that I've used all the way through the project. So a little tiny bit of barn door just to get that kind of red look. Um, but most of what I'm using is going to be vintage photo, ground espresso, just to start to kind of make this feel like it's been around for quite a while with all these different stamps coming in, different colours, layering them, putting them in in kind of different directions. Wanting to make it feel like this envelope has been received and passed around numerous people over the years. to finish off that closure so I created a slip knot in and honestly that took me so many times <laughs> that's why I cut that out of the video I made such a mess of make, making a slip knot but I've made a slip knot um, I'm going to uh, just place it over and behind one of those kind of circles and then slip the slip knot up uh, which also took a lot of faffing <laughs> uh, so yeah there we go slipping that up so you can't see the knot now, when you first make these little circles, they do, they take a little bit of bedding in. You have to use them a few times just so that they kind of know how to kind of move and um, rather than just being flat against the, uh, the pocket there. So I've just cut away the excess and just trying to decide what length I want the um, 
the, the piece that's left to be. So this is how it's going to work. There we go, we've got a little bit of journal paper inside and then we've got our little closure here so we can just tie that. I think I'm going to end up cutting that a little bit shorter because that but it's, it's not quite long enough to go around there again, is it? So there is our little finished pocket. And that is going to sit on the back here. And you'll see I swapped out that uh, that piece of paper that I first thought of because I saw this beautiful um, butterfly picture in one of my other vintage wildlife books. And I thought, you know what? That one just suits this project even more. So I'm just lining it up on the back here to be able to mark the size that I want this to be. I want those butterflies peeking out the top of that envelope so the page needs to be extended a little bit so i thought i'd extend it with a bit of torn uh, text paper from another area in that book so i've just torn that piece out quite raggedy um, just edging it there just so that it feels like there's i didn't want it to be straight so um, just kind of emphasizing those edges with a bit of vintage photo putting it in place just kind of getting it in that place that I want it to be. What I'm doing slightly off screen here is drawing around, I flipped it over and drawn around it. So that, there we go. So that I can see where I need to put the glue so that I can attach that bit to the bottom of my butterfly page. And then it's so much easier to cut out the bit that I don't need. Here we go, because now I can hold this up here I can see what needs to come off. And I'm kind of going with that torn look, so I'm using my steel rule just to tear away the excess there. Now just seeing what length needs to be. So again, just placing it in position and popping a little mark either side so I can line my ruler up against that and tear that last little bit off the bottom. So it looks like these two pieces of paper have been kind of stuck together for a long time now. So going around with the vintage photo, again just starting to bring these two parts of the page together so they look like they belong together like that. Or well, at least they've belonged like that for quite a long time. And then popping some tea dye on the actual page, even though I know this is already vintage, just want to kind of take the edge off the brighter colour, give it a bit more age. Again, smooshing with a bit of that tea dye as well. Trying not to get, I'm just using a really light touch here. I don't want too much of this smoosh on there. I have put some of the bundled sage on, as you can see. And now I'm bringing the bundled sage in again. And just coming in with a bit more of that bundled sage on that little script stamp just to add a little bit more detail. So we can see this is how it's gonna go, like that on the back there with that little coin envelope stuck below like that. And I've also just started thinking about the spine here. So I've got this little label that I printed out and I thought that that could be like a, a belly band for my label to go through. So I want to cover the spine first before I do that. So I've cut that piece of um, page from the top of that illustrated book because it had a title and a header on it and I thought that that would be really nice. So I'm just trimming that down to fit that space there. So again, it, because it's come from the same books, it looks and feels the same and it's already got those words on which is really nice. So I'm just giving it the usual treatment with the Distress inks, a bit of tea dye going around the edge with the vintage photo, Coming in with a little bit of smooshing. Using that ground espresso just to really pop the edges there. And going in with a little bit of that stamping. So that's gonna sit on there. So I'm just gonna stick this down. I'm not sticking that back cover down yet because I want to keep my options open for the closure. I have an idea of what I want to do, but if I don't stick down the cover, it means I still have options of adding closures, uh, ribbons and so forth underneath that, uh, that cover page that I have created. So for now, I'm just gonna stick down the spine because that little sticker that I'm gonna bring in in a second, my idea is to use that as a, a little kind of belly band to put the ribbon behind. So that's gonna go there. The ribbon will thread through it so that that will create the closure. That's my idea anyway. 
So next time we are going to finish that closure. We're gonna put the back cover down. We're gonna cover these little strips here that haven't got anything on yet. And of course, that front page. So join me next time when we will finish this project off.